So today we're going to be creating a brick breaker, as simple as that. And whenever it touches the bottom, it just resets the game and we start it all over again. All right, so let's see how it's done and let's go. Okay, first thing, we're going to change our camera from skybox to solid color and we are going to put this color over here just to have a nice hue of gray. And then we're going to create our pedal, pedal, our ball, our obstacles, obstacles, and our walls, walls. So for our pedal, we're going to create the sprite renderer, the rigid body to control it via physics, and the box collider. Box collider 2D that right now we don't have anything. But then we're going to change it for our pedal over here. All right, that's too big, that's too big. We're going to change the scale in the X axis for 0.8 and put it over at minus four in the, oops, not in the rotation, but in the position. All right, let's see, seems better. Let's also shrink it a little bit over the Y axis. All right, 0.9 seems fine. The box collider, we're going to toggle it, remove it and put it again, just so we have a better outline here. Yeah, we're just going to adjust it a little bit, a little bit smaller over here and here, here, all right, much better right now. And then we are going to create a pedal controller. In this pedal controller, we're going to grab the rigid body at first and then check for left arrow and right arrow. And actually, we're not going to change the, the velocity here. We're going to be changing the direction. The direction is just a, a vector two, a vector two direction. All right, and then on our fixed update, why fixed update? Just because we're going to try to use physics and it's better to use physics over at fixed update. If we have no direction, then we're just going to return. But if we do, we're just going to add some forces in the direction with some speed. The speed, let's just create it public so just so we can tweak it over the editor. It's going to be at first like 30. Uh, let's just see how it feels. And that should work at first to move the pedal. Let's see it back again. All right. And before we do anything else, let's just delete gravity, delete angular drag, uh, put a little bit of linear drag here, like 0.3, have the mass be like half, freeze position in the Y axis, because we don't want it to go up and down, and freeze rotation in the Z axis, and let's see what we have. Let's add our script to our pedal, and this, the speed is here, it's 30, let's see what we have here. Yeah, it goes, goes somewhat fast, but yeah, let's just tweak it to be a little bit slower, like 15. Yeah, it feels a little bit better, but the, the drag seems like a lot right now. Let's increase it, yeah, it feels better. Let's increase the mass as well. All right, it's a little bit heavier right now. Let's shrink it a little bit, 0.75. Yeah, it feels better right now. Let's just increase the velocity one last time to 25, and let's see how it feels. All right, now, now I like it. So 0.75, Nina drag 0.6 and 25. So let's just tweak those numbers, 0 0.75, 0 0.6, and 25 on speed. All right, so let's put our ball over here, right render, our ball here, circle collider, uh, it seems fine, let's just tweak it a little bit, here and here, here and here, mm -hmm. and a rigid body just so we can respond to physics. Rigid body, and it's okay to have a graphic scale, no angular drag, no linear drag, and let's just put this physical material here, this bounce ball. Uh, it's just a simple zero friction one bounceness in this ball, and let's see how it feels right now. All right, it just keeps bouncing right now. Nothing happens, okay? But okay, we have a working ball right here. So let's make this ball start with some force at first. So let's just create a script here. Let's just increase it so we can see it better. Create the ball initializer, initializer. Okay, so what do we have here? Public gather for the rigid body. It's better like this with a gather and setter. We have a uh, speed for the ball, initial speed that we can tweak it. We have in the awake moment, we just grab the rigid body. And at start, we just wait uh, one second to start the random trajectory. And then we give it a force uh, between minus one and one in the X axis and of minus one in the Y axis. And then we add this force to the ball to begin the game with. So let's see how it works. If we just add it to the ball, Okay, so that was weird. That's because our ball is going is still affected by gravity. Let's just not have it be affected by gravity. All right. When it begins, it just falls off the screen. Let's make the X range be a little bit smaller here, like like this, just so we can avoid this kind of situation that we just went through. The ball starts with an angle and bounces off and goes straight beyond the screen. 
So now it's a good time as any to create the our walls. And it's going to be a container for four walls, the left wall, left wall. Oh, we don't need to type wall here. Let's just create a simple collider, box collider 2D here. And it's going to be placed here, just a little beyond the camera, like this. Let's just make it a little bit bigger, all right? We're just going to duplicate it with Control D and change it to the right wall. So we're just going to drag it here. And then let's make our bottom wall, bottom wall. Oops, not button, but bottom is just going to be the same thing except that we're going to stretch it over the y the x-axis not the y-axis and you really don't need to care too much about the the height here because ideally your ball is not going to go through here but yeah just for a good measure let's make it somewhat thin and then finally the top wall top wall we're just going to drag it upwards and then when we highlight the walls we're going to see all four walls here so what does it do well if we start the game now we're going to be bouncing forever and ever even if the ball falls through not though it doesn't have any checks right now to see if the ball falls through but it's working right now all right so ne our next step is going to be to create some obstacles and it's also going to be just a, a receptacle for obstacles and let's just put our ball a little bit lower here just so we can put the obstacles close to the center all right let us see all right obstacles create empty obstacle the obstacle is just going to be a renderer renderer with some let's just choose some random color here like blue color it's just too big right now let's scale it a little bit more a little bit more that seems better and it's just going to have a collider just so we can check for collision all right it doesn't need a rigid body because we're not going to control it via physics and let's just put it somewhere over here minus six and here two four four seems fine and then we're going to make a prefab out of it just in case we want to change all of them just a single stroke so we're going to create a prefabs folder here prefabs and then put the obstacle right here and then we're going to duplicate it sometimes a little bit ah. okay they are all very close to each other let's just duplicate it again and put it at six here all right we have a very tight uh, obstacles and that's why we made them uh, prefab because we can just open the prefab here and make it a little bit smaller again in the x-axis and then saving it going back to our scene it's very spaced so not that much better let's make it 4.45 0 0.45 and it looks better and let's just encapsulate them all in a row it's just a row here grab all of them and put it inside the row the row and let's just duplicate some rows one two three four five five rows and give it then some space minus one minus two minus three and minus four all right but right now if you just play the game the ball just bounces over them and doesn't do anything and by the way i think the ball is too large for everything <laughs> in the game right now so let's just shrink the ball a little bit make it a little bit smaller the x and the y axis yeah that seems better let's just see it over at the game screen yeah it's better so the last thing we need to do is to make the bricks break whenever the ball touches them so we're just going to we're just going to create this brick destroyer script brick destroyer we're going to attach it we're going to attach it to do it to the prefab here so we just come here over the scripts choose the obstacle and put the brick destroyer here and what's the brick destroyer going to do the brick destroyer simply ju just has one method that is the on collision enter 2d and when it collides with anything else other than a ball it just returns so it does nothing but if it's a ball we are just going to destroy the brick so let's see how it works in action let's go back to the game make sure a random obstacle has the script and one last thing we need to do we need to tag the ball as a ball if it doesn't have the tag here you can just add a tag here and create it by clicking on here and saving the name but then we're going to tag the ball as a ball, save it, and let's see how it works. And it's working. It's breaking the bricks. It works just fine. And the last thing we need to do is to make the game be over whenever the ball hits the bottom. If it doesn't catch the ball fast enough, the game needs to reload. So that's pretty much simple as well. The simplest way to do this is to take the bottom wall here and create a script just for this. 
So let's create this script here again. Game resetter, game resetter. Put it in the bottom wall. So what we have here, we just have a collision entry to D again. If it collides with anything other than a ball, it just returns. And if this collide, we just load the scene. Uh, my scene is named like main game. And you need to edit the build settings. I'm just going to show you how. And you need to import the setting management here from Unity. So back at Unity, you just come to File, Build Settings, and make sure your scene is here. I have other scenes here because I was just doing some other stuff in this project, but just make sure your scene is here. And then when we play the game, everything was just fine. If it touches the bottom, the game just resets. And that's it. That's the game. If you liked it, please give it a like. If you want more Unity tutorials done as fast as possible like this one, please subscribe because I'm going to do a lot more than this one. If you like some some other game dev tutorials, game design tutorials, and anything else in between, just consider subscribing as well, because this channel is all about it. See you soon.